In probability and statistics, density estimation is the construction of an estimate, based on observed data, of an unobservable underlying probability density function. The unobservable density function is thought of as the density according to which a large population is distributed. The data are usually thought of as a random sample from that population. A variety of approaches to density estimation are used, including PARS and Windows and a range of data clustering techniques, including vector quantization. The most basic form of density estimation is a rescaled histogram. Example of density estimation. We will consider records of the incidence of diabetes. The following is quoted verbatim from the data set description. A population of women who were at least 21 years old, of Pima Indian heritage and living near Phoenix, Arizona, was tested for diabetes mellitus according to World Health Organization criteria. The data were collected by the U.S. National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases. We used the 532 complete records. In this example, we construct three density estimates for blue, one conditional on the presence of diabetes, the second conditional on the absence of diabetes, and the third not conditional on diabetes. The conditional density estimates are then used to construct the probability of diabetes conditional on blue. The blue data were obtained from the mass package of the R programming language. Within R, Pima.tr and Pima, they give a fuller account of the data. The mean of blue in the diabetes cases is 143.1 and the standard deviation is 31.26. The mean of glue in the non-diabetes cases is 110.0 and the standard deviation is 24.29. From this we see that, in this dataset, diabetes cases are associated with greater levels of glue. This will be made clearer by plots of the estimated density functions. The first figure shows density estimates of P, P, and P. The density estimates are kernel density estimates using a Gaussian kernel. That is, a Gaussian density function is placed at each data point, and the sum of the density functions is computed over the range of the data. From the density of glue, conditional on diabetes, we can obtain the probability of diabetes conditional on glue via Bayes' rule. For brevity, diabetes is abbreviated DB in this formula. The second figure shows the estimated posterior probability P. From these data, it appears that an increased level of glue is associated with diabetes. Script for example the following R commands will create the figures shown above. These commands can be entered at the command prompt by using cut and paste. Library data data Pima less than R bind glue less than Pima glue D0 less than Pima type equals equals no D1 less than Pima type equals equals yes a base rate D1 less than sum plus sum glue dot density less than density glue dot do dot density less than density glue dot D1 dot density less than density glue D0 F less than approx fun glue d1 f less than approx fun p dot d dot given dot glue less than function p1 less than glue d1 f asterisk base rate d1 p0 less than glue d0 f asterisk p1 x less than 1 to 250 y less than p dot d dot given dot glue plot plot Col equals blue, x l a b e equals blue, i l a b equals estimate p p p, main equals na lines. Col equals red. Note that the above conditional density estimator uses bandwidths that are optimal for unconditional densities. Alternatively, one could use the method of Hall, Rusin and Lee and the RNP package for automatic bandwidth selection that is optimal for conditional density estimates. See the NPV yet for an introduction to the NP package. The following R commands use the NPC dens FY X less than NPC dens Pima Eval less than data dot frame glue equals SEQ max length equals 250 plot lines col equals blue legend col equals C 
LTY equals C. The third figure uses optimal smoothing via the method of Hall, Racine, and Lee indicating that the unconditional density bandwidth used in the second figure above yields a conditional density estimate that may be somewhat undersmoothed.